Thank you so much, Vaughn. That was such a blessed time. Thank you for leading us uh, in songs and worship. God is good. Oh. Am I audible now? Ah, it's been <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank you so much, Vaughn. That's what I was saying. Thank you so much, Vaughn. And God has been so good to us. And the more we worship him, the more we come closer to him, the more we fail to worship him, to honor him, and to meditate on him and to think about him. Somehow it just satisfies our spirit. And that's such a neat feeling. I thank you, God, for this wonderful time and being able to get connected with you all. Right from Sunday afternoon till Sunday morning, I keep waiting for this moment when I can see your smiling faces and when I can get connected with you and we all can together worship our dear Heavenly Father. And here comes the moment, the time, the most valuable moment from my point of view. And when we are connected right now, let us just get into the Word. But before going into the Word, shall we just bow our heads down and pray to our Heavenly Father that He will help us to understand His Word. Because His Word says that you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. How good it would be when today we receive His truth. His truth will set us free. If there is anyone who is going through any sickness, he'll be set free from the bondages of that sickness. If there is anyone who is going through any depression, if there is anyone who is going through any bondage, if there is anyone who has got any stronghold, let the truth of the word deliver us from all bondages, from all depression, from all strongholds. The truth has that strength. The word of God has that strength. The truth shall set us free, says the word of God. And let that same truth act in our life as we hear his word, as we hear the truth. Let the word raise that faith in us so that we will be delivered today. And let that blessing just come over us. Let us take this time to pray for, uh, for the families of Dorothy and Kate and Pray for their children uh, so that they will come unto the Lord. Let us give thanks for successful surgery of uh, Jeff, for successful surgery of Indrani, Aidan's mom, uh, for successful surgery of Brendan, and for successful test of, uh, of Lindsay. We just want to give thanks to you, Heavenly Father for all the wonderful things that you have been doing in our dear brothers and sisters, for answering our prayers. Thank you, Father, for the wisdom that you gave to the doctors and the nurses who ministered to these dear ones, Lord. And Father, we thank you for every provision. We also want to pray for Liam's mom, who is, uh, uh, who is sick, and we just pray, Father, that your healing touch will be available to her. And Jesus, by your stripes, the word says, she is completely healed. So, Father, we just pray that we will claim that word for this dear sister and she will be completely healed, Lord. The pain that she is going through. We want to remember Sarah, one who is, she is when she is suffering from shoulder pain. Lord, we do not know the exact reason. We do not know what is the issue with her nerves or bones or muscles. But one thing we know, Lord, that your spirit resides in her. And we pray you, Holy Spirit, please heal her inside out and let her feel know that her shoulder is completely healed by you let liam's mom know that she is completely delivered from all sicknesses father we thank you lord for your love we thank you for the hope and peace and joy that we have in you lord when we get into your word we pray open our heart so that we will be able to receive your words in the depth of our heart Give us understanding, Holy Spirit, that we will be able to understand every single thing. We'll be able to enjoy your word today. Speak to us, Lord. We seek your voice. We seek your voice, Daddy. We want to hear you. We thank you for this wonderful time once again. And everyone who is connected anywhere, Lord, we release and we speak blessing over them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Let us get into the word that we have been seeing last two Sundays. And we are into this topic of unsearchable riches of the Christ. The way Paul uses the word, the unsearchable riches of Christ. And last two Sundays we have seen three types of water, the spring, the fountain, the streams. And then we started seeing the food. And last Sunday we covered two grains, wheat and barley. Wheat, which speaks about the limited Jesus, the Jesus who was born, Jesus who was under limitations, Jesus who died on the cross, Jesus who was buried. And that's what wheat speaks about. And then we spoke about barley. Bali, which speaks about the resurrected Jesus Christ, unlimited Jesus Christ. And then we had moved into uh, the, the, the plants, the wines. The wines, which speaks about how the wine needs to be crushed and pressed so that wine is produced. And we had seen how uh, Judges speaks about wine, which is used to cheer, to bring cheer to God and to man. And unless we go through that pressing and crushing, the wine cannot be produced from the plant wine. And then last Sunday, we, we reached to this next plant that is fig, fig trees. And we were seeing how fig trees, Bible refers in Judges 9-11, which is the food which is the food for uh, Israelites and it was the first fruit which was offered and we have seen how the first fruit was supposed to be given and, and fig again represents Jesus and I was pondering on this because we concluded there let us go ahead from here now so we are in Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 8 Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 8 which speaks about a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates a land of oil olive and honey and all individual words which are used over here the food material which is spoken over here they represent Jesus they represent the Christ and when God was talking to them about the land of rest, the promised land, Canaan, and he was telling them that this will be the food material you will find there. And we know how the land of Canaan, the land of rest, from Hebrew chapter 4 speaks about the rest that God has appointed for you and for me. And God wants you and me to enter into that land of rest. To know Jesus in the form of what he has kept in that land, in the form of that land. So first we had seen that land as spacious land. Very, very spacious, large land. Then we had seen that same land as ascending land, as hills. And now we are seeing this land full of this wonderful food material. We had seen one of the riches in the form of types of water. Now we are seeing the riches of Christ in the form of food material. And we see how Jesus represents in the form of wheat, barley, in the form of wines. And now we are into fig trees. And you know, my dear brothers and sisters, unless we experience Jesus in the form of wheat, Unless we experience Jesus in the form of barley. When I say this, I mean to say unless we experience Jesus as a limited one who died on the cross. And then we experience Jesus as a resurrected Christ. When we experience the resurrected, resurrection power of Jesus in us. Then we move on to this experience of knowing Jesus in the form of wine plant which needs to go through crushing and pressing. 
and I will not be surprised and I am very sure that you all will agree with me that we all have experienced Christ in the same sequence some way or other. We have experienced Christ as our Savior, as our Redeemer. We have experienced our Christ several times in our life as resurrected in His resurrected power. He has multiplied, He has shown that power in you and me in different ways. But then it's also true that we have gone through different pressing and crushing. And no one likes that, that phase of being crushed and being <coughs> pressed strongly. We all have this question, why Lord, why me? But the interesting thing is, that's how God introduces Jesus into you and into me. That's how God wants us to enjoy Jesus in the form of being crushed because then the wine is produced. And when we, when we are into this, you know what happens? Only after that, we come into a phase to know Jesus as a fig tree. As a fig. And when we see about fig, if you, if you read Judges 9, 9 and 9, 11, we have seen how the word speaks about uh, these figs. Can, can we see Judges? If you come to chapter 9, can you read? But the fig tree said to them, yeah. Should I seize my sweetness and my good fruit? Yeah. And go to sway over trees? Yeah. So this speaks about the sweetness. 9.9 nine. And then 9.11 But the fig trees said unto them, Should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit? And I am also seeing 9 uh, This is 9 9 says, But the olive tree said unto them, Should I leave my fatness where with by me they honor God and man and go to be promoted over the trees? It speaks about the sweetness of fig tree, fig fruit, and it shows the purpose. The purpose was to honor God and to honor man in verse 9. When we experience Jesus as wine, being crushed and being pressed, when we go through this phase of life, wherein we go through tough times, tough times being challenged in our family, tough time being challenged in our profession, tough time being challenged in our personal life, tough time being challenged in our faith life. When we go through that, the result is the sweetness starts coming up. My dear brothers and sisters, always remember this. Unless we go through the phase of being crushed and pressed, the sweetness cannot come in our life. The type of Jesus in the form of sweetness, the type of Jesus so that we will be able to honor God and honor man will not be possible unless we go through the phase of being pressed and crushed like wine to produce wine. Only after this phase, we can know Jesus as sweetness. We can know Jesus as through whom we can now honor God and we can honor man. In my faith life, in my faith journey, one thing I have realized, which I want to share you, there have been Several speakers, there have been several preachers, there have been several pastors whom I have heard. I have seen them very knowledgeable. I have seen them, someone who have read lots of books and commentaries and you know, all sort of stuff. Someone who has gone through wonderful universities and have got wonderful knowledge. I have heard several preachers, speakers, who have so... So they are so good in words. They, they can use beautiful words and, and express and explain uh, different things from Bible in such a wonderful way. But, but when you hear someone 
who has gone through phase of being crushed, who has gone through phase of being being pressed. When you listen to them, even if they they stammer, stammer sometimes, even if they do not have too much of knowledge about the word, even if they are not able to speak beautiful revelations from different corners of the Bible, but when they speak, for some reason, I do not know how it happens. I do not have any logical reasoning behind it. But I have seen how they have been successful in touching the hearts of people. I have seen people crying out. I have seen people running towards the Lord. Although the message was very simple, although the message was a few words, although the message was with poor language, although the message did not include so much of, you know, uh, verses from different corners of the Bible, but, but the, the phase that they have gone through, because of that, the sweetness just comes up and therefore we find the sequence in which these words are being used over here. It is after being a wine, then and only then we come to the phase of being a fig tree. Then and only then comes the phase of expressing Jesus or enjoying Jesus like a fig fruit, which will be full of sweetness. And there is being ability, there, there is an ability to honor God and to honor man. That happens because of being crushed. That happens because of being pressed. I usually understand and say this that. Every successful man of God will always have a long story of being in valley. Because he has gone through such depths, God lifts him to that level, lifts him to that position. Just because he has gone through that depth. And that is the principle that this verse is trying to explain us. So, there are there, there had been times, you know, it, and I say this even from my own experience. There has been times when I have preached the topics which I preached these years. I have preached them before as well. Ten years back, before 2010, I, I have preached many of those topics. But the response, the effect on people is different now. There, there was a time of me and my family being crushed. There was a time when me and especially my wife, we both were under that pressing process. Almost for two years, we were struggling and we were going through that phase. And, and there was a big question mark, why is this happening? But after that, when we came out of it, God not only delivered us from that, but thereafter, there was some difference. I cannot... I cannot use right words to express that, but there was some difference that that all of a sudden there were people who wanted to hear. There were souls being saved. The message was same. The topics were same. And there were certain topics which I was repeating, in fact. But now, all of a sudden, I could see people being touched. People giving feedback that they were healed, they, they could reconcile in their relationship with their God, relationship with, in their family, relationship with each other. And that, that would surprise me. And I would feel, what is the difference now? The difference is being crushed. The difference is being pressed. The sweetness that comes out after that, the sweetness of fig tree that comes out after that. The way you will be able to honor your God. The way you will be able to honor your, your fellow brothers and sisters. The man, that is word being, being used. The fellow brothers and sisters. In my case, the, these fellow brothers and sisters were my colleagues. They were my students because I was still working as, as a university assistant professor. But then the way that was affecting, the way it was influencing, I could literally see that... I speak less, but it is more effective now. Earlier, I was speaking more, giving more efforts, trying to do by myself, but it would be very, very less effective. So there is that secret. This is the secret. When we experience, when we know Jesus being crushed, being pressed, and when we have those experiences in our life, those experiences will result into blessing. Those experiences will be powerful. Those experiences will lead into fruitful life. Wherein you would hardly do anything and it's 
only and only God who does. But when is he able to do so? He is able to do so only when we go through that phase of wine being crushed and being pressed. And probably many of you know about this culture which is followed in, uh, in, in Japan and in, chi in, in China wherein if in, if in case a vessel is broken, they join that by gold and they use that vessel as, as an ornament, as a, as a treasure thereafter because they believe a broken vessel is more valuable than a complete vessel. So when our lives are broken, when our lives go through such phases, when our lives go through such troubles, then next phase is the time when you will see fruits in your life. You may have to go through the phase of wine, but then comes fig trees. And the fig trees speaks of that sweetness. That fig tree speaks of that goodness the honoring of God and man. You remember Lazarus, brother of Martha and Mary. He was sick. He was in trouble. He was on deathbed. His sisters, Martha and Mary, they had sent message to Jesus Christ, who was in another town. And they had sent message, your, your friend, your close friend, he is sick. He is on deathbed. He may die any time and he is asking, he is requesting if you can come down and speak word of life for him. Can you please come? Jesus wanted to be there but then he said let's wait for three days. But think about Lazarus and Lazarus was going through that phase of being crushed and being pressed. The faith of Martha and Mary was being challenged. And after that when he died Jesus came. And he spoke the word and Lazarus came out of the tomb. And we see after that, when Lazarus is in new life now, after that, all people around, they got to know what Jesus has done. They got to know that someone who had died, he has come out of, out of tomb after four days and he is alive. And people thronged and they wanted to see him. Everywhere Lazarus had gone, people would be crowding and wanted to see the testimony, the witness. How can this dead man be alive? Is he the one? And that made many people to follow Jesus Christ. Lazarus had gone through, Mary and Martha had gone through that pressing and crushing, but that resulted into, into sweetness. I also want to tell you, when someone goes through such phases in life, not everyone will be preachers. Not everyone will be someone who are going to people and preaching. No. But you know, the beautiful part is the, the sweetness just starts flowing among your relatives. That sweetness just starts flowing among your family members. That will just start flowing among your friends. Without you doing anything. Without you speaking anything. For some reason. Believe me. I really do not have that logic. I will surely when I go to heaven. I will surely ask Holy Spirit. How did you do that? How could you work that? How could you manage to get that done? But this is the truth. That when we go through this phase of being praised and crushed. Somehow that sweetness just starts flowing the way you look the way you walk the way you talk the way you move that just releases that sweetness and goodness of Christ and that may not be realized or tasted by you but people will be able to see that in you for some reason people will start coming unto you and inquiring what do you think I should do now what is your advice on this and you may feel I have never shared him what I had gone through few days back or years back why is he expecting any response from me the sweetness will just start flowing you will just become a rose which is just hanging around but people around they will know wow look at the beauty wow such a good fragrance the rose will think why are people just surrounding me they are standing around me but that's the beauty of Christ that's the beauty of Christ 
So going through the phase of being pressed and crushed actually will make you sweet and good. And that will be used by God to reach out to people. Then when you stand for the Lord, you will be able to see fruits. You will be able to see multiplication. You will be able to see people coming down to Christ. People will be attracted. They will be attracted not towards you, but towards Jesus. And that's why he says, and then comes fig trees. And he connects that with pomegranates. That's the next word that is used. Pomegranates. He speaks about pomegranates over there. And he says about pomegranates. And if, if you see a pomegranate fruit, you will find it is so bountiful. It, it, is, it is so multiplied. There is, there is so much of beauty in it. And there is so much of bountifulness or, or you know, uh, abundance in it. The moment you, you take off all the pomegranate seeds, you will find everywhere beautiful and lot many seeds. And that is what happens. There will be multiplication. There will be just growth coming up. As a child of God, always remember this. When we receive Jesus as a wheat, when we receive and continue and move ahead in Jesus, in his resurrection power, as we move ahead and being crushed, going through different difficult situations, and when we start releasing that sweetness and goodness of God, my dear brothers and sisters, the way God had promised to Abraham that I will bless through you, I will bless the world through you, now comes the moment wherein that word literally becomes live in you and in me. You will be able to see multiplication. You will be able to see abundance. When God promised Joshua in chapter 1 verse 8, day and night meditate on my word and everything that you put your hand into, I will make it fruitful. I will make it successful. That part of blessing will be manifested once we have gone through these stages. So now is the stage of pomegranate. Now is the time to know Jesus in the form of abundance. And what do I mean by that? I mean to say, now through you there will be multiplication. Now through you, there will be flow of blessing in abundance. Always remember, before coming to that stage, there are these stages of struggle. There are these stages of pain. Unless you endure those stages, you cannot get into the stage of abundance. You cannot get into the stage of multiplication. Which platform set by God is a bed of roses? None, believe me. None. For every calling, for every anointing, for every ministry, there is a cost. There is a cost. Now when I say ministry, when I say anointing, I am not only trying to speak about Church ministries being apostle or prophet or preacher or pastor or teacher, no, or evangelist, no, I'm not limiting myself to that. But because I believe every profession, every role that you and I play in the society is a calling, is a calling, is a ministry set by God. Not everyone can be pastors, not everyone can be evangelists, but God will put you and me in right place at right time and get his things done. He will set his kingdom through you and through me in different parts of this world. He will not work only in the church, but he will work everywhere. 
when you work as a teacher when you work as a doctor when you work as a policeman when you work as an engineer when you work as a businessman when you work as a mom when you work as a dad over there you are being used in the calling of god you are being used in the ministry set by god and over there to be successful over there to be bountiful over there to be able to see the fruit of, for the kingdom of god these phases of being crushed pressed and being able to spread the sweetness and goodness has to be there that is required we are not in any profession for worldly reasons but we are there for, for kingdom reasons you and i have been appointed good works even before the foundation of the earth god has said that god has planned to put you in specific role but to be successful to be multiplying factor to be in abundance in that role these phases are the ones that you and i will surely go through will surely go through my dear brothers and sisters no role comes easily the higher the role the higher is the cost and the one who endureth till the end will be the one who will achieve that crown of glory will achieve the crown of glory and you and i in whatever role today you are you and i know the cost that we have paid for the time that you have spent studying the time that you have spent equipping yourself with different skills the time that you have spent to learn from different people is no joke those were the times of being crushed when today we see someone at higher position we feel so good we try to admire the life that they're leading but we do not want to know the phase before reaching to that position and that story that journey if we see if we start studying we will realize that no position comes for low cost every position demands cost but praise be to the lord glory be to the lord that's what these words are trying to teach us that when we are for kingdom purpose when we are for god's objective when we are in his plan we will for sure go through this phases but these phases will lead into multiplication will lead into abundance for the glory of god we will be able to honor him and man that is the pomegranate that he is speaking about the beauty and the abundance that will come in our life and who doesn't want to be successful everyone wants to be successful in any phase of life in everything that we do we would like to be influential and the secret is the phases of being wheat barley wines fig and then comes pomegranate we cannot expect to jump directly to be in the phase of pomegranate there is journey some cross this journey pretty fast some do take time but it's okay it's okay once i lost a very young friend of mine and a big question mark was in my heart lord i am very sure if in case he had been able to live a longer life he would have been such an influential person in the world as far as his ministry is concerned he would have been such an influential person why did you take him now he was being prepared he had committed his life for your ministry and he was ready to serve in any part of the world in remote villages why did you take him and there came this understanding through one of the servants of god he said 
for everyone there is set plan and purpose of god for everyone and once that set plan and purpose is achieved for someone it may be just one person god must have brought you on this planet earth just to be a reason for one person to come to christ and that's fine for some other person there are 5 million people to come to christ and that's fine it's not on the basis of numbers that you or i will be judged no it's on the basis of faithfulness and trustworthiness that we show towards our calling my faithful son come and enter into your joy that's all whatever he has allotted to him even if we are able to achieve that that's absolutely fine for heaven that's good i said okay lord and that was such a peaceful revelation to me whatever god has allotted for you for some among you maybe thousands for some it may be one or two and that's fine it's god who has allotted that appointed that and let him have that authority to achieve that much from you and from me but when will that be possible when we come to the phase of pomegranate we will be able to see those results when we come to the phase of pomegranate do not be dismayed do not get disheartened do not lose your lose your patience do not lose the track when you are going through the phase of being pressed the one who can sustain it's just a small phase believe me for some immediately probably you may say no avish in our case it has been long time for last few years we are just going through being pressed being crushed we do not know when we are going to taste fig fruits remember the more you are pressed the more you are crushed the better wine will come out the better quality wine will come out now you and i we do not have parameter to calculate the quality of that wine only god knows that only god knows that but you are a blessed one if you are going through that phase of being crushed if you are going through that phase of being pressed if you are going through that just remember the sweetness is just waiting for me i just need to sustain hold on be patient it's difficult it's tough <laughs> i I I was just remembering this few days back during my university days when I was doing my engineering studies and uh, being in second year uh I had uh I had failed in few of my subjects and my mom and my dad especially my dad he was he was so angry on me and he would say where is your god now <laughs> look at your results what are you doing and i i was feeling like why lord and i still remember every night i would be so so much in pain i could not sleep and i would talk to god and say lord i am doing your ministry lord i am reaching out to people lord i pray i read i do this that and why for me why me why me why me oh dear almost for one year i was going through that tough time and i more often would feel enough of this enough of this let me just run away from this and go out for some other course something something simple maybe bachelor of arts that was my next choice let me just get into that and probably i will be i will be okay with that course not this why did i choose this oh! <laughs> I, i i i really want to thank holy spirit because if in case he had not been with me at that time i would have not been able to finish that course and now when i look back i realize if in case i had not done that course i would have not been able to testify jesus among engineers i would have not been able to testify jesus among so called educated ones because when god loves someone who is in slum when god loves loves someone who is poor 
God also loves engineers. He also loves professors. He also loves all educated ones. He wants them to be saved. But who will reach to them? Who will go to them? I can say that today. But when I was being pressed and crushed, I wanted to run away. <laughs> I thought I will pray for some other people. You do engineering. Be blessed. You are equipped. You are intelligent. Go ahead. I knew my capacity. I won't be able to do that. It was so hard for me. Looking at the competition, looking at the, 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 the struggles that to remember all those thick books, to go through those thick books. Oh! God helped me. And because he helped me, thereafter then I could see that pomegranate stage wherein I could sit with so-called educated ones and speak to them the word of God. Some way or other, the gospel could reach to the educated ones. But there was that cost. But that's okay. If someone is going through such stage today, I just want to encourage you. Hold on. There is bigger glory coming up next. There is something big that God has planned through you. He will help you to pass by. There is nothing. Believe me, the word says there is nothing. Oh, there is nothing that will come in your life which you cannot bear. No, God is faithful. If God has said that, he will do that. He will ensure that you will not go through anything that is not in your capacity. He knows your capacity. And therefore he will allow you to be pressed and crushed to that extent. And then comes that part of being fig fruit and pomegranate. Being sweet and being multiplied. Being in abundance. Reaching out to more number of people. Reaching out to places wherein you never ever thought about. That's God. That's Jesus. We need to know Jesus in this frame as well. From this perspective as well. That is the land that Jesus, God is talking about. The land where God wants to take you and me. Good that we have enjoyed him as our redeemer. Fantastic that we are enjoying him as our resurrected Christ. Awesome. Very nice. But we need to move ahead. We are kingdom people. We are chosen people. We are called to see forth the kingdom of God getting established in different offices, in different governments, in different centers, in different churches. Enjoying Christ as pomegranate. And then in this same sequence, we come to the last plant that is olive. And he speaks of a land of oil olive. So he is very clear in saying the purpose of this olive is to make oil. So uh, let us get into one word. This is very interesting. Can you come to Zechari Zechariah? And I'm seeing verse 4, uh, chapter 4, Zechariah chapter 4, and I'll be reading from verse 11 to 14, last four verses. Chapter 4, 11 to 14 says in KJV, Then answered I, and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick? And upon the left side thereof. So there is a question. Because there were two olive trees. One was on the right hand side. And another one was on the left hand side of the candlestick. Then I answered again and said unto him. What be these two olive branches. Which through the two golden pipes. Empty the golden oil. Out of themselves. So it again speaks of oil. Then he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then said he, These are the two 
anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. So they, in these verses they speak of two olive trees which is on the right hand side of the candlestick another one is on the left hand side of the candlestick and he asks what are these and God goes on to answer the father goes on to answer and say these are the two anointed ones. My dear brothers and sisters, the olive oil speaks of Holy Spirit. The anointing of oil speaks of Holy Spirit. And in the book of Zechariah, it speaks of two such olive trees. The one you and I very well know is speaking about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was when he was on the earth, he was spoke, said that he is the one who is anointed with the oil of gladness. He was full of Holy Spirit. And in the power of Holy Spirit, right from the moment he was anointed, he was led by the Spirit of God. And everything that he spoke and everything that he did was in line with the instruction and direction of the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit who resurrected Jesus on the third day. The power of Holy Spirit was so active in Jesus Christ because Jesus is said to be the anointed one. He's called anointed one. So the one that is being spoken here is Jesus Christ. And you always remember, although there are several books and there are several people who speak about different things about Jesus Christ, but Jesus was always active and Bible is so clear. The moment he was baptized, thereafter he was made to do different things through Holy Spirit. The healings, the rising of dead, the walk of being someone who is lame. Everything was done by Jesus Christ under the headship of Holy Spirit. He spoke what he heard from the Father. He did what he saw Father doing and Holy Spirit was the one who was getting everything done through him. The anointed one, the anointed one. And then there comes a moment when Jesus says, I need to go to my father because if I do not go to my father, he will not be able to send that comforter to you. He will not be able to send that spirit to you. For when I go, I will ask him to send that spirit to you. For I will neither, never forsake you nor leave you. And the spirit of God, the spirit that resurrected me, the spirit of God himself will live in you. He will anoint you with his spirit. And that is the new covenant that he was speaking about. That his spirit will come and dwell in you. And that spirit will lead you. And how he speaks about being leading. He speaks that you will not only do what I do. But you will be able to do more than what I do. Through whom? Through Holy Spirit. When you are persecuted and you are questioned, Holy Spirit will give you the words. What are you supposed to speak? Do not worry. My Holy Spirit will remind you my verses. He will tell you about my things. He will open the word unto you. You will be able to understand many things which I have not spoken to you. Because right now you are not in a position to understand those things. But when the spirit of God will come. He will help you to understand many different things. New things of the kingdom. And you will be able to move into those revelations. And last 2020 years. The church has been able to move successfully. Phase by phase. Historically. In his revelations the spirit of God wants to anoint you and anoint me he had very clearly said to his disciples wait for that spirit wait be in one accord and in one mind and wait and the day you receive then you move out from Jerusalem to Samaria, from Samaria to Judea and to the uttermost parts of the world but when, when you receive that anointing when you receive that anointing. So the one is Jesus and the second is you and me. Is you and me. Holy Spirit anointing needs to come over us 
which will lead us to live a life the way God wants us to live. While uploading videos about beautiful attitudes, the more I am pondering on that, the more when I prepare on that, I realize that unless we have Jesus in him, unless we have the Holy Spirit anointing in us, we cannot display those characters that Bible speaks about. We cannot display the attitudes that Jesus speaks in Matthew chapter 5. We cannot display the, 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 the approach towards life that Paul speaks in the book of Ephesians, in the letter of Ephesians chapter 5. We cannot unless we have Holy Ghost. It's not on the basis of my willpower that I will be able to do so. No, not possible. Not possible. If I attempt on the basis of my willpower, I will again repeat what Paul said. I do what I do not want to do and I, 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 I do not do what I wish to do. That is the willpower. In my will, I will always fail the character of God. But when I'm anointed by the Christ, by the Spirit of God, then and only then I will be able to move ahead powerfully. Powerfully. And my dear brothers and sisters, I'm talking nothing new. We have been seeing the situation that this world is into. The cultural drift, the change in thinking, the change in lifestyle, the approach, everything is changing. The next generation is looking at life from different point of view. The way you and I have led our life, no more the next generation will lead in that way. The things are telling us. The situation, the governmental situation, the environmental situation, the, the economic situation is very clearly telling us that the things will change. And in this changed situation, anointing of Holy Spirit is a must. My heart, my heart is praying fervently that Lord let the next generation be stronger. Powerful than we are. Let they be able to speak and testify you in a much better way than we could. Anything and everything till now has been done. Let that change to very higher level. And let your word be proclaimed. Let your works be seen by the world in a very new way. In a very new way. Let there be healings in Zoom meetings now. Let there be deliverance in Zoom meetings now. Even through internet, let the work of God be seen in different families, in their own house. No more probably people would like to say that I went to that church building and there I was healed. Now people will say I was sitting in my bedroom. I was just having my food in my pajamas and I heard that word coming unto me and saying you are healed and I so my pain was gone. This God is alive. I pray for that. I pray for that right now. If there is anyone who is in any bondage, if there is anyone who is going through any stress, any depression, I say let the word of God reach out to you, speak to you and deliver you now. Now in the name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus is above everything and anything. In a new way, in a new way, something that had never come to our mind, something that we could never think about, absolutely new way, be, we be able to hear and see God's movement. And I'm excited about it. Enough of all the testimonies that we have been hearing till now. That God did this, God did that. No, something in new way. Land of oil, olive. 
the last word that is used over here is honey so till now we have seen the plant kingdom wheat barley wine fig pomegranate olive six plant kingdom now comes honey which has two kingdoms plant as well as animal you know what i have taken a lot of time <laughs> i'm wondering whether we should continue this next sunday or because honey is really sweet honey is something that is related to wanganui honey is something related to this land new zealand i don't want to just introduce you and leave you but honey is sweet uh and bible speaks so much about honey when he speaks about plant kingdom when he speaks about animal kingdom you remember when we were speaking about how god had asked israelites when they were in egypt god had asked them to put the sign of blood on the door steps and inside they were supposed to eat the the lamb the sacrificial lamb and they were supposed to eat the lamb with herbs and bread so the herbs speaks of the plant kingdom the lamb speaks of the animal kingdom and honey you and i very well know that honey involves bee as well as lots and lots and lots of flowers so it has contribution from both animal kingdom as well as plant kingdom and what is the significance of animal kingdom and plant kingdom in our journey or in our experience of jesus is really really interesting and i don't want to finish that in few words so let us stop here and we will continue this next sunday can we close our eyes please dear heavenly father we thank you for your wonderful treasures it's such a joy to know you more for we for the more we know you father the more we love you and lord we just want to hug you we just want to hold you strong for you are such a lovely father and lord i take this opportunity to pray for every single member of our congregation and everyone who is hearing us who is connected with us father we pray that your abundant blessings will come over them father i pray if someone is going through pressing and crushing phase strengthen them holy spirit endure them help them to endure help them to be patient in our lord and lord we thank you for the phase of being a fig fruit and pomegranate thereafter lord i pray anoint us with your oil anoint us with your spirit so that we will be able to move out powerfully in your strength being able to display all characters of jesus that you want to be displayed in our life thank you father for your blessings as we move into this week lord we pray help us to stand strong in our faith irrespective of the announcements irrespective of the situation in the world help us to stand strong in faith and your name be glorified in every word and in every deed thank you lord in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen shall we go into time of communion if you are ready with uh, your communion i will just request you to keep your bread and wine ready as we are also ready and let us remember the sacrifice of jesus that he did for you and for me he had said i give this body for you this body is broken down for you and for me my dear brothers and sisters he gave the cup of wine and he said this is the sign of new covenant do this in remembrance of me
this morning when we come unto this communion let us remember how and why jesus was crucified when his body was broken in every stage he released deliverance for you and for me from every sickness every drop of blood that was shed by jesus cleanses us from our sins cleanses us from all that we repent for and confess in front of him his blood is faithful even today as we confess and repent he cleanses us with that blood is the blood of jesus my dear brothers and sisters which erases the memories from our conscience the past memories which may be haunting someone i want to tell you encourage you the blood of jesus erases those memories removes the guilt and enables you and me through holy spirit to stand in front of the father through the righteousness of jesus christ and call him abba and father let us come unto him revering what he did on the cross this morning i am sharing this bread and this wine this juice with my family maybe you can also do that Lord we thank you for what you did on the cross. Lord we not only remember how your body was broken for us and how you shed your blood for us but we also want to stand on that. We also want to witness that in the world that we believe that you died for us and you rose on third day for us. And how good it would be Lord that we would be able to share that testimony to the uttermost part of the world how much you love everyone thank you father for what you did for us and we receive this in the name of jesus